When I say the word euphorbia, does the thing that come to mind look a bit like a spiky cactus thing? Like this euphorbia harita here? If it does, that's fine. Same for me. But today I'm going to be taking you down a rabbit hole into a whole other world of euphorbias. In this case, focusing on the species Euphorbia francoisei, a very interesting and highly variable species from Madagascar, which, as you can see, looks a bit more like a palm tree than a cactus. So, hold on tight while we explore these wonderful leafy little beauties. So these plants grow in Madagascar, which surely is one of the hot spots on earth for endemic succulent plants. As you can see, they have quite a swollen tuberous rootstock, which typically in habitat would be found underground, a water storage organ that enables them to survive long periods of drought. And what that means is that ordinarily, you would only see this rosette of leaves emerging from the soil, perhaps with a few flowers coming out the top. Makes for a very interesting shape. But that's perhaps not the most interesting thing about these plants because they're what we call quite variable. Now what that means is that these plants can take on very different forms, even from the same parents. I'm gonna show you now, this is a Euphorbia francoisei, and so is this. Now you can see very different leaf shape, leaf color, even leaf size. Then compare them to this. Even greater variation. And so those variations in the plant form have made this a plant much beloved of breeders, particularly in Asia, who try to bring out all these different characteristics. They might breed the plants to get the reddest leaves, or they might breed plants to get, as in this shape, a kind of almost ivy leaf shape. One of the more interesting plants I've seen recently had almost cup shaped leaves, quite fascinating, and often done in coordination with other species. They hybridize them to bring out these different traits. The end result is that you have these plants that are incredibly collectible because there's so much variety. You can have 10 different Euphorbia francoisei and they all look completely different. Really, quite an interesting plant to grow. Now, in cultivation, there are a few things worth noting. They are an easy species to care for. They need a well-draining, quite gritty soil, as do most succulents. You can see these ones growing. Don't need an excess of light, although they will tolerate full sun. It'll kind of bring out their sort of stressed red leaves a little bit more. But as per habitat, dappled sunlight, part shade, makes them quite happy. Regular water, both through the summer period when they're in active growth, but a bit of winter water is also good for them. But perhaps most interestingly is how we can care for this tuberous root. Now, I've raised this root above the soil line. It's a bit of a feature. But once it's raised, this part of the root essentially will stop growing. It continues to grow and fatten up beneath the soil line. So really what you want to do is ensure that before you raise this plant, or indeed almost any cordex plant, that it's attained the size that you want. Because essentially, coming up here, this has finished its growth. I'll raise this again in a season or two just to keep adding a bit of height. But in many instances, the leaves are what we care about in these plants and they don't even need to be raised at all. So that's Euphorbia francoisei. Fantastic, very variable plant, well worth collecting and very different to what we imagine many of those euphorbia plants to be.